as the US steps up the heat on the Russia through sanctions and the strikes on Syria, the message from Washington to New Delhi is equally clear that the countries like India should start looking at US differently. Ahead of the key strategic partnerships of energy dialogue, the US Under Secretary of Energy Mark Menezes told the Economic Times that it's important for the countries like India to not let the Russia and the China gain over the US in these areas. And he said, I think India should start looking in the direction of the United States. Look at us, look at what we are offering and then choose us over other countries. I'm not saying it will happen overnight, but start looking in our direction at least. When asked on the concerns that the US may be less cost effective to Russia and China, he said, if the countries begin to choose for the economic reasons only to go to the countries like China and Russia, which frankly do not share the values of democracy, free markets, religious tolerance, I would suggest we need to think very carefully. The US menace emphasized offers a more reliable options now that it's a net export of oil and natural gas. This allows the countries which shares our values to choose between the countries that can threaten to cut off supply or exit because you are dependent on them. The US is keen India signals its strategic inclinations towards the US in the energy sector adding that the Trump administration will ensure Westinghouse builds new nuclear reactor in India. And he claims, be careful of those countries which come in and say the price should be determinative factor which when you enter into a co-partnership with them. We want that when the countries like India with whom we have shared values look for nuclear partners, they want to be with countries like US. Manez also told to the Economic Times that he was convinced on the Westing's house bounce back from its economic troubles to build reactors in India. We think Westinghouse will be very strong coming out of the bankruptcy. We are very supportive of their technology and capability to build their six reactors here in India. Bankruptcy will be no longer an issue. He went on to add the US attached a significant importance to India's membership request to the nuclear supplier group. We are pledged that we will look critically at any, any effort to impose unreasonable restrictions to their membership. So what do you think of US or the United States in nearly begging for India to not to go to Russia and China, instead it has to come to US for all its needs. Is it the right direction to go only towards one country with a democracy or it's very good safe for India to go to democratic, secularistic and communist countries to have a spread of equal things to all the countries so that India will be safe on all the countries. In Kolkata Insurgency is likely to increase in the northeast after the Doklam standoff with China and there are already signs of it in the region. Former GOC in Sea East Command Lieutenant General J.R. Mukherjee said here today. Whenever India has honored China or there has been a border related issue between the two countries, it has aided insurgents in the northeast, Mukherjee told the Economic Times. And commenting on the plausible fallout of 74 day standoff with the Chinese at the Doklam in the Sikkim sector in 2017. Consequent to Doklam, insurgency will increase in the Northeast, and the signs of these are already evident. The retired Lieutenant General, who is the Vice President of the strategic think tank, Sanoreske, said. Mukherjee said that the Doklam is neither the first time nor the last time that the China has made such an attempt. Its army will keep coming and the camp at the places of that country's strategic interest. In Doklam, they will eventually try to twist the Bhutanese state to get what they want. He said and claimed that the Chinese have not left the Doklam but have only stepped up the little back. The Center for East and the North East Regional Studies or the Senores in Kolkata which has as its patron former Army Chief General Shankar Roy Chaudhary and the advisory former Air Chief Marshal Arup Raha 
is organizing a two-day dialogue on Indo-China issues and the relation between the two Asian chains. The seminar to be held on February 2nd and the 3rd of 2018 is scheduled to be attended by the Ministry of State of External Affairs General Rutai, VK Singh, and will deal on the issues ranging from the political, economic and the military capabilities to problem and the prospects relating to the bilateral investments. Professor Gua Shi Tang, the Director of Institute of International Strategic and the Policy Analysis of Shanghai University of International Businesses and Economics, will be there and the lone Chinese speaker at the event, which is also scheduled to be attended by the US and the Japanese diplomats. So what do you think of China getting ready again in the Doklam standoff, which may trigger a battle between India and China? The last time any country put boots on the moon was in 2013, when China landed its U-2 rover there. Before that, you had have to look back to 1970s to find anything built by earthlings that camped out of the surface of the moon. ISRO The Indian Space Research Organization is getting ready to land its very first lunar rover by the end of March 2018 as part of its Chandrayaan-2 mission. This is not ISRO's first journey towards moon or to the interstellar space, but it is Indian government's most ambitious moon exploration projects to the date. Chandrayaan 1 Blasted off from Sri Harikota, island off the coast of east of India in 2008, at an estimated cost of 83 million US dollars. The ISRO's 5 foot cube made into lunar orbit and detected some magmatic water on the moon crater. Then on November 14, 2008, the probe crashed into the moon and got lost in the lunar orbit before NASA found the spacecraft again in 2016. This will be ISRO's first attempt to get into a more delicate and precious up-close look at the lunar surface. Indian Space Research Team is preparing three unmanned vehicles for the trip an orbit craft that will hover above the moon's surface plus a rover and a lander that will safely plop the rover onto the moon. If all goes well, this mission on the moon will be completed in 14 Earth days. That's just enough for the moon to make one full orbit around our planet Earth. The Chandrayaan 2 mission is just one of the projects that the ISRO is hoping to launch in the next several years. They are also working on the project called Azithia that will study the sun and a 5-year satellite called Exoposat that they want to use to learn more about the cosmic radiations. So what do you think of India's ambitious projects now against Moon? Will this be a success one and will be a proud moment for India as of Mangalyaan which was sent to Mars in 2013? Yama Motor has taken an initiative of installing green energy by installing 
one of the largest rooftop solar project of 6 megawatt. Post your comments below and if you like this video please give a thumbs up and follow us on social networks and subscribe to our channel and thanks for watching this is WC Daily think big think different bye